it's not impossible at all that you watch this go. I mean, right now we're hearing that that Carolina likes both Richardson and Stroud. Okay, let's say they take Stroud. And then Houston's number two, and they say, okay, we're going to take Bryce Young because that's the obvious thing to do. And now all of a sudden, you know that if Anthony Richardson gets to Indianapolis, they almost have to take him. So if you believe that Richardson's much better than Will Levis, and you are whomever, you just mentioned the Raiders. You're the Raiders. You're sitting there at, what, six, seven, seven. something like that? Could you trade up to number? with Arizona, make sure you grab Richardson. Okay, you do. And now if you're in, you still need a quarterback. So you give it a run with Will Levis and hope that it works. Now your quarterbacks are going one, two, three, four. You're the Seahawks. You got Jalen Carter. You got Tyree Wilson. You've got Will Anderson. What do you do? What would I do? I yeah. would go Will Anderson. Would you? Yeah. I would. So he plays more of an outside linebacker in this game. Yeah, he he is he is your classic outside linebacker. Whereas uh, Tyree Wilson, he looks more. He's six six two seventy five ish. That's more of a, a Carlos Dunlap mm-hmm. uh, body type that he would probably be better suited to play uh, defensive end. And maybe if he puts on a little weight, he can be a guy who who moves inside. So uh, two kind of different body types there. But I I just think look, it, you can't rule out the possibility of the Seahawks drafting the quarterback because I think for among other reasons, well, there's the Geno contract and the fact they're only really committed to him for one year, but then just look at their history. And I think we've talked about this too. Go back to 2017. They fell in love with Patrick Mahomes and everything I've been told is that they would have drafted him. Other people have reported this as well. They would have drafted him had he fallen to them a year later, they call the Cleveland Browns uh, asking about Cleveland's interest in trading the number one overall pick for Russell Wilson uh, and my understanding is they were in love with Josh Allen. So the point is that they're, they could fall in love with a guy. Now, I think it would take that. I, I absolutely think it would take them falling in love with one guy and that one guy falling to them mm-hmm. at number five. As so you a, don't think there's any chance they trade up for it? So what if you're the Seahawks and you watch C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young go into and you're in love with Anthony Richardson? How much does it cost to trade up to number three? Now, I don't know if the Cardinals are going to trade with you. Right, in the maybe, division. Maybe the Cardinals yeah. just say, no, we won't do that. But let's pretend that's not it. Let's say the Cardinals are willing to deal even within their division, just for the sake of this argument. Do you trade up to number three to try to say, hey, and if, you believe, if you're John Schneider and you think Richardson's in that category, he's the guy that you've fallen in love with, would you do it? If, if you think he's that guy, yes, I, I would do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you figure, okay, the, I don't know, have the draft value chart for me, but I would imagine that the cost to go from five to three is probably equivalent to something in the second round. Yeah, it, it probably yeah, probably a late second, early third in yeah. that range. Okay, so so you f- just think of how easily they could recoup that value. When they're picking at 20, that's a spot, that's kind of a range in the draft where they like to trade down anyways. So if you trade down from... Uh, 20 to, I don't know, I guess you, to, to, to get a second round pick, you'd probably have to trade back into like the early second round mm-hmm. uh, to, to get another second round pick for moving back that far. But yeah. And, and I mean, look, it's a second round pick. If you're, if the cost of, you know, getting a franchise, you know, generational quarterback is that like, yeah, you easily pay that. Now you raise a good point about Arizona. Is Arizona going to trade back and arm a division rival with a quarterback? I have a hard time seeing that. I do, but I just sort of look at this and say, you know, uh, just based on one of these charts, this is the draft tech chart. There's a ton of them. But yeah. this uh, shows that there would be a 500-point difference between number, uh, number five and number three, and you have your, your second-round pick is worth 530. There you go. So, I mean, if you wanted to give up the 37 pick, that's about the value that it would take for you to move up to uh, to number three. If you wanted to move up to number four, uh, it's even a little bit less than that. It's actually significantly less than that. It's only a hundred points to move up. So what if what if Arizona says, okay, we're drafting Will Anderson, and now maybe you could trade back one with Indy, right? And and say, okay, we love this. Oh, I, I'm I'm intrigued by that, and it hasn't been talked about that much because it doesn't feel like what the Seahawks would do. But I think you're right when you talk about their history. They know the quarterback is the thing that makes the world go round. If there's an opportunity to get the guy they're in love with, don't you have to? Do, I feel like you owe it to yourself to do it.